coming up on Fresh View with Pastor Inkechi Ene. There are moving variables in every marriage. The variables moving in my marriage are not the variables moving in your marriage. Or you that is single going to be married, you're going to discover your own moving variables. Partners run with the vision, partners share in the provision. We invite you to become our partner today. Visit www.freshdew.tv or call plus 234-700-3737-4339 for details. Hello and welcome to Fresh Dew. I am Pastor Nkechi Ene and it's always my pleasure to welcome you to every single episode of Fresh Dew. Today on Fresh Dew, we take part 97 of our message series. You see, we're almost going to get to 100 very soon. Part 97 of Marriage 101, 10 important things about marriage. Now, what have we done so far? If we say there are 10 important things, then we've looked at some so far. The first one was that marriage does not complete you or rather it complements you. The second important thing was that God is the originator of marriage. Third, we found out marriage is a spiritual, scriptural covenant, and more than just a legal contract. Four, we discovered that marriage is one of the most major and important destiny decisions you'll ever make as a believer. Five, sex is an integral part of the marriage covenant. And six, we looked at roles 
for the male husband and the female wife in the marriage covenant. Seven, communication, a litmus test in marriage. Now, in looking at communication, we covered so much ground. We looked at foundations of the foundation, rather, of effective communication. Then we looked at the five elements of communication, and then the three methods of communication, and then the five levels of communication. And after that, we got into the in-laws phenomenon, and we, de we decided that it was good to put it in communication, because sometimes when this phenomenon goes out of hand, communication rifts are taking place. So the in-laws ph um, phenomenon, in-laws are those relatives you inherit when you get married. So we said in-laws can be a blessing. We looked at how to deal with conflict with in-laws. And last episode, we almost began, but we couldn't quite get into it. So now we're going to get into it. The third section, which is maintaining the right balance with in-laws. And there were three scriptures we read. Do you remember what those scripture, scriptures were? To talk about maintaining a right balance with in-laws. Ephesians 5, 31 to 32. 31, actually says, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. And then Ephesians 6, 2 to 3, honor your father and mother. So the same father and mother who you leave, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Then Romans 12, 9 to 11, let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Romans 12, 9 to 11 will really serve as a good guide in how to maintain a right balance with in-laws. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another. So let's begin to look at several things under ma maintaining a right balance. We want to do that. We know that in-laws are a blessing, but we also know that there can be serious conflict. Some marriages break up because of in-laws, because the phenomenon overwhelms the whole marriage. So we know these two extremes exist, and we need to strike a balance. Well, first of all, breaking news. You make up a Kainos Katesis family. That is the beginning of maintaining a balance with in-laws. Get this breaking news that you, child of God, watching with your wife or you, child of God, watching with your husband, even if they're not there with you, you, child of God who's married, you make up a kindness Catesis family. 2 Corinthians 5.17 tells us, if any man being Christ is a new creature, a kindness Catesis, a brand new formation that never existed before. Well, that is what a spiritual, scriptural marriage is. That is the beginning of maintaining a balance. Understand that when Miss you, Mr. A, got married to Mr. B, a Kainos Katesis family was formed, a brand new family that never existed before. That word, that word Kainos, literally means new in freshness, recently made, unprecedented, novel, uncommon, unheard of, unused, unworn, now take that and translate that into your marriage. New in freshness, recently made, unprecedented, novel, uncommon, unheard of, unused, unworn. What is the implication of having a kindness family? The implication is this, that you, both of you have got to be ready to make changes in your life. Because where you have been, Mr. A, belonging to this family, that has always existed, and you've been Miss C, belonging to this family that has always existed. When you come together and you become Mr. and Mrs. A, you are not dragging Miss C, who you've now married, into the A family that existed before. No, you are forming a brand new family, unused, unworn, recently made, new in freshness, never existed before. A brand new family is now being formed. You're not bringing your wife and plonking her into your family. And you're not taking your husband and dragging him to try to be connected to your own family. No, a brand new family. So changes need to be made. Adjustments need to be made. Glory be to God. Even when two perfect saints get married, they will have to make some changes. 
because they are two uniquely different people coming together as one. Adjustments in marriage, listen, are not necessarily because the individuals are bad. Adjustments are because both individuals are different coming together to make a brand new family that never existed before. So you shouldn't resist change when you get married. It's actually expected. You shouldn't resist adjustments when you get married. It's actually ex expected. Why? Because you are kind of family, brand new, that never existed before. That is the beginning. That is the breaking news you need to settle if you're going to even start to maintain a balance, a right balance with in-laws. Glory be to God. Next thing, nuclear family comes first. Your nuclear family comes first. So this brand new family is not just being formed, it now takes priority. You say, well, that's, isn't that inferred? No, it needs to be said. The nuclear family takes priority. And I've, looked, I've mentioned five areas in which, and I'm sure there are more, but I like to do letters. So these five areas begin with the letter P. So in privacy, in participation, in provision, in planning, in protection, the brand new Canos family takes priority. In privacy, in participation, in planning, in provision, in protection, the brand new family, the Mr. and Mrs. A that were formed, to form this kind of family. They both have their extended families where you find the in-laws. And we're going to learn how to balance that whole relationship. But this is the beginning. It is a kind of family that never existed before. So where privacy is concerned, even in very little things, when you were a bachelor, when you were a spinster, if your siblings used to walk into your bedroom, just anyhow, now your marriage is different. They've got to learn to ask. They really have no business in your bedroom anymore. Your bedroom becomes a private place, except they're invited in. If your mom could come in easily and lay on your bed and hang out, now you're married. Even if your mom doesn't know that, you need to tell her, mom, you can't just walk in anyhow. You can't just come in anyhow. It's, she may not even mean it in a bad way, but she may not think about it because you're her child and your spouse has now become her son or her daughter. But it is for you to tell mom, no, the kindness family, the nuclear family takes priority in privacy, in participation, in conversations. You're making decisions under normal circumstances. All your brothers and all your uncles don't know everything before your spouse does, or all your sisters, maybe your twin sister, some twins are like this, they get married, and they don't know that now that they are married, there's got to be a break. Oh, well, I've always been very close to my twin sister, or my twin brother and I do everything. No, no, no. Now a brand new family, cutting you off from that twin, separating you from that thing you've been used to. A brand new family has been formed, and that family takes priority in privacy, in participation, in provision, in provision, and when we get to one of our points down the line, when we get into finances in marriage, we'll talk about provision and why it should come first to the nuclear family. I hear horror stories about people who spend a lot of money on their brother's children, but their own children are not, are not taken care of. Are you under a spell? Is there something wrong with you? Are you under some kind of influence? How can your, oh, well, my elder brother made sacrifices for me. Oh, my elder sister made sacrifices for me. Oh, my brother, you know, did this. No, no, stop. A brand new family, a Canos family comes first. Everything else comes second. So we've got to make it unequivocally, unashamedly clear to in-laws on both sides of the family of the, that the nuclear family, the husband, the wife, the children, all come first. Provision, planning protection. Your, your wife or your husband shouldn't be hearing about the plans you're making from your family. No, something is wrong with that. If you've got an abnormal situation where you've got a spouse who is a crook or a spouse who is not trustworthy and that has been proven over time or a spouse who is so materialistic they cannot handle such plans, that's a different conversation. But this is the ideal. This is what should happen. This is what is expected to be where this nuclear family 
this kindness family comes first. And you do all that is within your power as a spouse, all that is within your reach as a spouse to see to it that the kindness family you are in now takes priority in all of these areas. Glory be to God. I'm so grateful to my husband. But this is one of the things my husband did early. He made it clear to both sides of the family that we were a brand new family. I don't even know how he needed to do that because I don't believe he had as much revelation. He was saved, but didn't have as much revelation as we have now. In fact, both of us didn't know as much as obviously we do now. But God guided us and God helped us. And I guess the sincerity of our hearts were able to make the right decisions, able to create a balance early and have a situation where extended families loved and reached. But it was made clear to every part of the family on both sides that this is a brand new family. And now 29 years later, we're reaping the benefits of it. Sometimes people watch, oh, why, why is your family so blessed? Or how come you're so connected with your husband? Or why is it that you know, he, he tells you things before he does them? I, well, you began from the beginning. So now is the time to make that shift. Now is the time to fix things. Now is the time to make it clear that a brand new family, when you've made that clear, that you now determine the extent to which interference, influence, and even positive involvement takes place. Remembering that we said in-laws can also be a blessing. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This is so good. So we've said, breaking news, you make up a kindness family. We said nuclear family comes first in privacy, participation, provision, planning, and protection. And then thirdly, do not be naive. Understand individuality. To maintain the right balance with your in-laws, child of God who's watching, do not be naive. Don't jump in just thinking you know what you're going in to meet. Understand individuality. Having said all we have said about in-laws not necessarily being a bad thing or a bad concept, we must understand that the right application of all of those benefits we talked about with in-laws, you know, being a blessing without excesses is actually based on the individuals involved. You see, child of God, there are moving variables in every marriage. The variables moving in my marriage are not the variables moving in your marriage, or you that is single going to be married, you're going to discover your own moving variables. So you've got to understand individuality. And this is why we spoke about being sensitive, being discerning, walking with God, his word, and his spirit. Because the same way the prints on my palm are different from yours, is the same way the moving variables in my marriage. The fundamentals will be the same. The basic principles will be the same. The concepts of the word of God will be the same, but the moving variables will be different. What are those moving variables? The background of the husband, the background of the wife, the kind of family the husband comes from, the kind of family the wife comes from, the kind of individual the husband has grown up to be, the kind of individual the wife has grown up to be, the kind of marriage the husband's parents had, the kind of marriage the wife's parents had. If the husband's parents were married at all, if the wife's parents were married at all, if there was violence in the husband's fa parental family, if there was violence in the wife's parental family, what kind of siblings they both have, what kind of relationship exists between the spouse and his or her siblings. There are so many moving variables. How many of them in the family are born again? Is, are both spouses born again? Are the parents born again? Are they truly born again in the word? Or are they born again religiously and they still hold on to traditions? These are all the moving variables that could interfere in a marriage negatively or could also bring a positive influence and impact to the marriage. So you must be sensitive to understand individuality. And if you're not married, you've got to ask questions. Don't just look into her eyes, oh, I love you, I adore you, and look into his eyes, oh, I love you, I adore you, God told me to marry you. That is awesome and that is good. But after you've done all the I love you, and you settle that God told you to marry each other. Stop, sit down, pause, and ask questions. Ask questions. Watch the way they interact with their family members. Watch the way they interact with their father. Watch the way they interact with their mother. Watch the way they speak about their parents. Ask questions if you observe anything you don't understand, or, understand any, or observe any abnormalities that may look abnormal to you, but may not be abnormal. 
am I saying this? You cannot step into marriage or you cannot expect to function in marriage with this phenomenon and not understand individuality, which are the moving variables. Another way to understand individuality is to understand that, for example, let me speak about myself. My mother has always been a mother to me. She's an amazing woman, but she's been in the role of mother. The, the minute one of her children got born again, she discovered a new role, a role she had never played before, and that's the role of mother-in-law. A mother is not a mother-in-law. A father is not a father-in-law. It may be the same individual occupying both roles. Get this revelation. It will liberate you. It will help you understand your spouse. It will help you listen better. Your mother is your mother. Your mother is your mother. But to your spouse, that same individual is the mother-in-law. Your sister is your lovely, adoring sister. But to your spouse, that same individual is stepping into a role she may not have stepped in before. And like any new role, there are discoveries to be made. And because the moving variables involve your spouse, your sister playing a new role as a sister-in-law is playing into the variable of your spouse with all the variables that exist with your spouse. So you must understand individuality. And don't be defending the experience of somebody else that you haven't experienced. What do I mean? You've only experienced your sister as your sister. You have never experienced your sister as a sister-in-law. And you will never experience your sister as a sister-in-law. You've only experienced your father as a father. You have never experienced your father as a father-in-law. And you will never experience your father as a father-in-law. You've only experienced your mother as a loving mother who suckled you at her breast or who gave birth to you after 10 hours of labor. Awesome. But you've never experienced that same individual as a mother-in-law. So you must listen. When your spouse speaks, you listen. Don't jump into defenses. Oh, you don't know my mother. Oh, my, you don't know my father. Oh, my sister is not like that. The problem is, do you pause? Remember we said last episode, do a self-assessment and not a spouse assessment. So you pause, you listen. Because the experience of your spouse, though the same individual, is of an in-law. That is not your experience. And if you don't listen to the experience of your spouse, you may find yourself blindly defending a rule you have never been exposed to and a role you will never be exposed to. Because what this person is to you, they are somebody entirely different to your spouse and both of you are meant to be one. This is so important in maintaining a balance. This is so important in preventing conflict. This is so important. Listen and don't be naive and actually understand the individuality of all the moving variables. Some of these moving variables are dead. It could be a late mother who is still having influence on your spouse. It could be a late father. It could be a grandfather. It could be an abusive uncle. It could be a loving auntie. There's somebody somewhere that you may not even know who may still be involved in this mix of moving variables. So you need the spirit of God. You need the word of God. You need to ask questions. You need to listen so you can understand the unique individuality of everyone involved. Glory be to God. So we're looking at how to maintain the right balance with in-laws. And we've just looked at three things so far. Breaking news, you make up a kindness family. Second, the nuclear family comes first. In what areas did I say? Privacy, do you remember? Privacy, planning, participation, provision and protection. In fact, I said it in this order. Privacy, participation, provision, planning, and protection. Go and meditate on these things. They're very important. And thirdly, we said, do not be naive. Understand individuality. Understand that there are moving variables and understand that there are roles you will never experience which your spouse has been thrown right into. So it's the same individual playing both roles. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for specific homes you have spoken to today. I know that. I know that so well. Homes you've reached into, changes that are being made, 
gears that are shifting, wheels that are being oiled, courage that is rising up, eyes that are being opened to see and discern and understand so change can come and the blessing can be manifest unhindered in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Are you alive, but not really living life? Do you know somewhere deep down that something needs to change in the course of your life? Does it feel like you have lost your way in life? Yet to others, you seem to know your way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Can you believe that somewhere on the inside of you? Do you believe it? He is the answer to every question and he loves you just the way you are. Today he's waiting for you with arms open wide and he wants you just the way you are. Will you make a decision today to surrender your life to him and run into those outstretched arms? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud meaning it from the depth of your heart, and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God, and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. Now you need to grow in your new faith and what has happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. We can help you grow in your new faith. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Freshdew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website, www.freshdew.tv. Once again, thanks for being with us today, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.